In this video, you will learn to use graphs to determine the number of solutions of a quadratic system. So in this lesson, we're going to assume that you already know how to graph different quadratic equations. So like circles, uh, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas. So with that assumption, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some different scenarios you might come across. And here we're dealing with quadratic systems, meaning that we have more than one quadratic equation at a time. So maybe we're graphing two parabolas, or a parabola and a circle, or a hyperbola and an ellipse. So any sort of combination like that is, is fair game for this lesson. So when you're doing this, okay, we have, like we said, different scenarios. And we actually will begin with systems that have a quadratic equation, and then we have a linear equation. So we're going to put this in this lesson as well. So for example, let's say we have a line and then a hyperbola, or um, yeah, and a hyperbola. What we could get is something where you have no solutions like this, where we have the hyperbola given and see this vertical line right here? Okay, this vertical line does not touch any point on the hyperbola. So something like this would be no solution. And here would be the equations representing that graph. Okay, we could also have one solution where it intersects at one point. So maybe we have a line like we see here, this horizontal line, and it intersects or crosses this ellipse just at this one point right here. So that would be an example of one solution. So in the quadratic, um, in the, the system that we have that represents this graph here is given down below. All right, and then we could have maybe two solutions where let's say we have a parabola and we have a line cutting through and it hits at two different points. So that would be an example of two solutions. And down here we see the equations of what would create that type of graph. All right, so again, we're assuming we know how to graph these if needed. We're just showing different scenarios that we could come across. So that's with a line and, a, and some sort of conic uh, section so here we're going to look at um, strictly quadratic systems where you have two quadratic equations. So first off, um, we could have possibly no solutions, and you see that pictured right here. Where this parabola is in the middle in between these two hyperbolas, or one hyperbola, the two parts of the hyperbola. So we could have a graph like this. So this has no solutions, and the equations would look like this. All right, so again, if you were given the equations, you could graph this to find that there would be no solution. Now, it could be one solution, something like this, where you have an ellipse, and then you have a parabola touching just right here at this one point. And here we see two equations that would give those two graphs. Okay, it could be two solutions, as we see here. All right, so we have a hyperbola and a parabola. So the parabola is hitting at two different points, here and here. All right, so that's creating two different solutions because it's crossing at two different spots. And the equations that would create that, uh, that graph would be right down here. So it could be no solution, one solution, two solutions, and it could be either uh, even three or four solutions as well. So it could look something like this, where you have a parabola upside down, and then you have a hyperbola right here, and that creates uh, three solutions. It's crossing here at this point, and then right here, and then down here, three different spots. And the equations that would create those graphs are represented right here. And then we could also have four solutions, and that would look something like this, where you have two parabolas, and what's happening is that they're intersecting at four different spots. So here, here, here and here. And actually, by the way, I should note that these equations, I think we switched those up on accident. So um, th these equations would go here with the four solutions one, and then these equations would go over here for the three solutions one. All right, so those are switched up. But either way, if you had to, you can graph, and you would figure those out on your own. And we're just trying to show you that we have different scenarios you could come across. So let's take a look at an example of this where you are told to sketch the graphs to determine on your own the number of solutions. 
All right, so we're going to actually take the time to graph some of these on our own to answer these questions. All right, so we have two different equations, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and 3x minus 2y equals 6. This first equation would be a circle. All right, and the circle is going to have a center. So the center is going to be at the point 0, 0. There's nothing being added or subtracted with x and y. And the radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. All right, so we have that information. And we could graph that over here. All right, so the center is at 0, 0. And we go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then to the right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can create our circle. It's going to look something like this. All right, and then the other equation, the 3x minus 2y equals 6, this would be a line that is linear. So there's nothing squared in that. And what we can do is we can put this into slope-intercept form to make it a little quicker to graph. So we can subtract 3x from both sides to bring a 3x to the right side. That give you negative 3x plus 6. Divide both sides by negative 2. So we have y equals 3 over 2x. And this is minus 3. All right, so what we have is the slope would be 3 over 2. And then the y-intercept would be the negative 3. So we can graph that. So we go down 1, 2, 3 to the y-intercept. And then the slope is up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2 right here. So we connect the dots, and we get this line like that. So notice what we have is we have this graph, and it intersects at two different spots. It intersects right here and right here. So therefore, we have two solutions to this quadratic system. Let's try another example. Here we are told to sketch the graphs to determine the number of solutions if you're given these two equations. All right, so this second one is probably the quickest to graph, x plus y equals 3. That's a linear equation. It's going to create a line because everything is to the first power. We could rearrange to get y equals negative x plus 3, where we see the slope is going to be negative 1 or negative 1 over 1. Right, that's from that right there. And then the y-intercept is equal to 3. All right, so we have that for the line. So we can graph that on here. We go up 3, 1, 2, 3. And the slope is negative 1, 1. So you go down 1 to the right 1. All right, so we connect those dots. And that gives us this line right here. OK, the other equation. We have 4x squared minus 9y squared over 36. OK, this one, what you want to do is get rid of the coefficients with the x and the y squared term. So we can divide everything by 36 to set it equal to 1. That becomes 1. This becomes 9 on the bottom. So we have x squared over 9 minus, this would be y squared over 4, equals 1. So what we know is that this, because of that minus sign, we have a hyperbola. The center is going to be at 0, 0. And we can try to sketch this. So the center is at 0, 0. We know it's going to be opening left and right, by the way, because uh, the x squared term comes first, and x is left and right. So it's going to be opening something like this. So we should find probably where it starts first. Um, figure that out quick. So the center is there, but that's not where it starts. If you go take the square root of 9, we get 3. So we go to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Takes you right here. And then to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, right here. We get those points. And that's where we start. So it's going to look something, something like this. And then over here, same thing, something like that. So it appears that it's going to intersect probably at two spots. So if we drew it correctly, it looks like it might intersect here. Uh, but then also it's probably going to cut down a little bit below the line, come back over here and hit 
twice. Now let's confirm that with uh, the actual um, graph, with a graphing software. And we find that we were correct. All right, it's crossing here at this point and then down here at this point. Let's try one more example. Here we have example three, and we have these two equations to graph. All right, so the first one, okay, this would be a parabola. So that is a parabola. Some things we know about this is that the vertex is going to be at the point uh, 2, 4. We find that from the negative 2 and the positive 4. We know it's going to be opening up as well. We know that because uh, the y coming first means it's opening either up or down, but because this number here in the front is positive, we know it's opening up. All right, so we can graph that uh, to the right two, up four, one, two, three, four, right here, and it's opening up. All right, so then the other one, right here, this equation, that is going to be an ellipse. We know that because of the format that this is written in. It's got the plus sign. Um, it's equal to one. That's going to be an ellipse. And the center, we can find, and that's going to be positive 2, negative 1. So, sorry, positive 2, negative 1. We know that because of this negative 2 and positive 1, you change the sign. So the center is at 2, negative 1. Let's plot that. It's going to be right here at this point. And then what we're concerned with is um, how high up and down is it going uh, primarily, and then also how far left and right. But looking at up and down, notice here it's going to get a 25 with the y term. You take the square root of that, which is going to give you 5. So from this point, you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which takes you right here to this vertex of the parabola. Then down 5 takes you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. Okay, and we know from the 4, it's going to be over uh, 2 both directions because the square root of 4 is 2. So over 2 takes you here and then right here. So your ellipse is going to look like this. So in this case, once we graphed it, we see that it's intersecting at one point. So therefore, it's got one solution. So we've looked at a couple examples. Um, each one is going to be a little different with the shapes that we're graphing and with the number of intersection points. So we've not looked at every single possible scenario you might come across. Uh, but here we've looked at a couple. And this concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.